In the beginning, there was nothing. In this area of sea here, as seen on Google Maps. Then Rare said, Let there be a sea of thieves. It shall have four main regions. The shores of plenty, a tropical paradise with clear blue water and lush vegetation. The ancient isles, an area with deep blue water and ancient monuments of stone. The Devil's Roar, a dangerous volcanic zone for only the bravest adventurers. And, uh, fuck it, sewage region. Anyway, let's have a look at some useless information about this beautiful map that Rare has created for us, starting with its real-world scale. As I mentioned before, this is where it's meant to be on the planet, and we know this because of this map you can find on the Maiden Voyage, found in the hold of the Magpie's Fortune. Although, I mean, if you look at the map, it seems to imply that the route into the Sea of Thieves is from the northwest, but in the Maiden Voyage you clearly enter from the south, but hey, I'm, I'm just I'm just nitpicking, you know. Some people have suggested that the Sea of Thieves is the Bermuda Triangle, but if you look at the shape of the map, you'll notice that it's a fucking square. Also, it's not even inside the Bermuda Triangle, look. Since you don't get much of a sense of scale with the Sea of Thieves in this area, here it is in the Irish Sea, and again off the coast of New York City. The map's grid measures 156 kilometers across, with each square on the map being 600 by 600 meters. Hmm. Let's focus on the Sea of Thieves itself now. Besides, the Sea of Thieves is where people went to escape the real world, was it not? Here it is. The map. It contains 7 outposts, 25 large islands, 39 small islands, 10 fortresses, 8 sea posts, 4 uncharted islands, 3 treasuries, 6 shrines, 6 sea forts, and 1 reaper's hideout, totaling 109 things on the map. The smallest island is Rapier Key, and the largest island is Tribute Peak, but we'll ignore that because of course it is, and say that the largest island is Smuggler's Bay. Rapier Key measures in at a measly 0.052 hectares, although it is relatively long at 114 metres hence the name. For anyone wondering, there's 100 hectares in a square kilometre. Smuggler's Bay measures in at 12.6 hectares, and Tribute Peak is four times that size at 49 hectares. Which is big! But is it the biggest thing in the universe? No. The Sea of Thieves has a total area of 24,336 hectares, and 216 hectares of that is land. Therefore, only 0.9% of the Sea of Thieves is made up of land, thus the word sea However, this does not include the rocks strewn about the place. Furthermore, 55 hectares of the land in the Sea of Thieves is uncharted, as in it doesn't appear on the ship's map. Therefore, a surprising 25% of land in the Sea of Thieves is uncharted. Let's amalgamate all this land into one island to make one big, beautiful island. And now, we'll reveal what it looks like. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'll do it. Get it, get it out of here. That's better. What is the most isolated island? Well, it's Ruby's Fall, whose closest neighbour is Flintlock Peninsula, 1.1 kilometres away. That's very sad. The closest two islands, on the other hand, are Black Sand Atoll and the Wild Treasure Store, if you can count a sea post as an island, which are only 462 metres apart. Aww. And finally, the honour of being the most depressing island in the Sea of Thieves goes to Glowstone Key! I mean, look at it, it's just pitiful. It's half being swallowed up by the Devil's Shroud on the map too, look. So we know how good ships are for getting across the map, but how long would it take to swim across the map? Well, it took me 352 seconds to swim from Daggertooth to Shipwreck Bay, which is 1.27 kilometers. Therefore, I was swimming at a speed of about 13 kilometers per hour. That's about eight miles per hour if you're American or a Tory. To put that into perspective, you're swimming at about the top speed of a mobility scooter and 3 miles per hour faster than the fastest swimming speed ever recorded. Makes sense. Based on this swimming speed, I was also able to calculate that the depth of the ocean floor next to a shrine is around 230 meters. Swimming to this depth in real life would obviously kill you for many reasons. To represent this depth as a length on the surface of the map, it's about the same length as the bay on Smuggler's Bay. I calculated running speed to be around 31 kilometers per hour, that's 19 miles per hour. I mean, not really surprising, is it? So it would take you 72 minutes to swim across the map, and just over 30 minutes to run the length of the map. I told you there'd be useless information in this video, didn't I? Moving on, the ocean current moves in a southeastern direction. 
Therefore, when sailing southeast, you'll find that you don't need to attend the wheel too often, as your ship glides along with the current. However, when sailing northwest against this ocean current, the ship will gradually drift off course to either the north or the west, so you have to keep an eye on your compass when you're going in that general direction. The ship can also be pulled off course a little when sailing in crosswind. The wind blows in the same direction throughout the entire map, but it's not the same across every server, unlike the storm, which is in the same place in every server. I used to think that the storm would move in the direction of the wind, then I thought that it bounced around the map like the DVD logo, like this. However, I now realise that it follows a set route, moving steadily from island to island, frequently returning to Reaper's Hideout and the Sea Dogs Tavern. This set route takes approximately 250 in-game days, equal to around 4 days and 4 hours in real time, allowing the weather to be predicted across the whole map. One place the storm never goes, however, is the Devil's Roar. It's hostile enough with its active volcanoes. Every large island in the Devil's Roar features a volcano which will erupt at regular intervals, but there are also an additional 5 sea volcanoes, including one that's all the way down there for some reason. Who, uh, who are you planning on sinking, buddy? The danger zone of each volcano stretches out by one map square. The volcano at Mora's Peak Outpost recently became inactive, making that now a safe area. Were we to represent Old Sailor's Isle on the map, the island from the Maiden Voyage, it would be here. We know this because during the Maiden Voyage you arrive in the Sea of Thieves south of Thieves Haven, and we can figure out from there the distance that's been travelled in the Maiden Voyage. Although, based on its position, Old Sailor's Isle ought to be visible when sailing in the main game. However, it isn't. Nor are all these rocks you have to sail between on the Maiden Voyage. I do find the shroud to be quite bizarre in the first place. I mean, look at its shape. Very geometric. Leading me to believe it was created, and not some natural phenomenon. Hang on. Perfectly straight lines drawn on a map with no consideration of the cultural consequences. But that means... The shroud was created by the British!